try to whack him up here. Oh, genie. Well, the big boss. Gonna need a bigger bench. Right. Right, frugal. Let's do this. Right, just gonna wash my hands quickly. Two sets, I'll be with you. Right, so, we are, this is the, um, so we're gonna go through this pig quickly. Yeah. Uh, well, not quickly. So, Berkshire pig. Okay, so this one's from Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, from the supplier McDuff. So this is one of the new ones we've been looking at. This is about um, eight months old. Okay, so this is obviously a half split. Yeah. So it comes in split in half, um, and it's been aged for 18 days. Um, and it, so eight months old, 18 days aged, Scottish Berkshire pig. Yeah. The Berkshire breed is sort of known as the, like the Wagyu of the pork. Okay. So good fat covering. Um, it's a breed that we're looking at using. It's got, it's a lot darker in, um, in meat than the current, than the other pig we'd be using, yeah. the middle white. Yeah. Um, but it's got a little so bit- the middle white, white's a type and the Berkshire pig. Middle white is a breed. Okay. Berkshire is a breed. Cool. Then you've got other types. Gosser Old Spot is a breed. Yeah. Um, uh, Saddleback is a breed, yeah. um, large sandy blacks are yeah. a breed. But, so this is a new one we're looking at. Yeah. So we're gonna go, we're gonna break it down first into all the primals. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start with the head. Yeah. We've got a shoulder, yeah. which has the collar inside. Mm -hmm. We've then got your, uh, your, you know, your sort of prime middle bit, which has your loin and your belly. Yeah. And then obviously we go into the leg. Yeah. The leg, obviously got trotters back and front. In terms of equipment we're gonna need, saw, yeah. Cleaver, a larger sort of slicing knife just to get some nice clean cuts. Steel, a boning knife, uh, non-flexible. This is about five in, five to six inches, something like that. You don't want anything too big because obviously we're going to have to go around some joints. Yeah. Uh, we've just got a, a small st a diamond steel and we've just got a honing, uh, honing steel as well. Yeah. Just for running a knife through. So this is the sort of thing you'd use just throughout the, throughout the meat. So you're just going to run it through. Or you could use a fine steel, same sort of thing. But every five minutes or so, you can give it a couple of run through to keep the edge nice. Yeah. And then obviously, every now and then, you give it a little bit more of a hone on the diamond steel. And then we'll obviously sharpen it on the wet stones once we finish. Yeah. Cool? So. We'll start off by taking the head off, because the head's obviously got the least, the head we used to do the least amount to. So, all we're gonna do with the head is really simply, we're just gonna cut it straight off. Obviously, we're using this for our signature dish mm -hmm. of the, break, the brine, the roast, the brine puff pig's head. All we're gonna do is literally see where the shoulder blade sort of ends. Um, we're just gonna get a knife, we'll cut through first. Obviously, if we use the saw straight away, you're gonna rip the meat. Yeah. So you wanna get a nice, sharp knife, yeah. and then we'll go through the meat first. Obviously, if we go too low, we're gonna waste some of that lovely shoulder meat. Yeah. And if we go too short, then obviously the head's just gonna be a bit too small. You can see how lovely and plump the cheeks are. Yeah. Really nice. The skin, it's been lovely and dry aged. So that, that, that skin is super crispy. And they dry age super it at dry. the farm? Or we dry age at they dry age it uh, at the butchers. So okay. it'll go to the abattoir. Yeah. It'll be killed, yeah. bled, etc. Chilled down, and then it'll go into the aging room. Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do, about here where the sort of where the cheek end just before you get into the shoulder just gonna go through the meat like so yep. it's so firm and you know the meat's lovely and cold but it's pretty you can pretty much go through there's not really any bone um it might just be a tiny bit at the bottom but you'll see so always go with the knife first and then once you're down to the bone it's a very yep. simple just Whenever you're doing the sawing, start just go in one direction to start with until you're inside. Like so. 
But if you start soaring left and right, yeah. or before you're actually into the bone, then you then you can end up slipping. So just yeah. go into the, once you're into the bone, then you're good to go. Yeah. Tiny little bone, that's all we've got. So obviously we've got everything inside there, beautiful fat covering. Yeah. So that's that's the end of the cheek. Yeah. With that massive bit of meat, you know, so quite often you could buy that like a big chunk. You can make guanciale out of it, etc. Yeah. etc. So that will literally will save this up with the rest of the pigs that we get. Obviously we're getting about three pigs a week. Six heads. We'll brine these yeah. overnight, 24 hours, 25% brine, yeah. and then that'll be ready to cook then. Yeah? Just grab a, grab a box and we'll put that put it inside. So the cheek is the work one child is. Well, the Grand Charlie is once it's secured. Yeah, yeah. It's like making lardo, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what it will be. Yeah. You can make it into yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, You know, that's what I think traditionally they need carbonara and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but so what we'll do, once we've brined it and cooked it, um, we'll braise it overnight and then we just deep fry it, skin yeah. side down, and then all of that, all of that puffed up skin will then protect the meat inside. Yeah. All that fat will just like base the rest I of the mean, meat. I mean, looking at it now, there's a lot more meat on than you'd actually originally think. Yeah, there's right. so there's so yeah. much. This yeah. is like a skull. Yeah. Um, the meat, the bone, the meat slides off the bone. Like you can literally just pull out the bone. Yeah. Um, next, we're just going to take off the um, we'll take off the two trotters. Yeah. Which we're just going to use for sauce. So obviously you've got bone. You can see because it's quite a small pig. Yeah. This is about uh, 50 kilo. Okay. You know, some Glossroll spots might be like. Upwards of like 80, 90, 100 kilos. So they're yeah. big, big, big animal. So these are quite small. So after the dry aging process, there's not much on them. And reason we want to use smaller pigs rather than larger pigs? Just for the way that we use it is, um, you know, for the chops. We like to serve that nice fat chop. Yeah. The meat, for I find the meat a little bit, a little bit more tender. Yeah. So just gonna score around the meat again, and then we'll just saw these off. <laughs> Like so, like you can see, there's not much, there's not much meat on there at all. So we'll yeah. just, we'll put those into the stock. So we'll roast them off with the rest of our bone. And then uh, that'll add a really nice uh, gelatinous, um, a gelatinous flavor, uh, consistency to the stock. So we've got the tail there as well. This can go into the stock. And again, we'll just do exactly the same here. So just about the meat. Yeah, I mean, like, again, here it doesn't really, for what we're using it for, all we're doing is we just don't want to waste any of the meat. So if yeah. I went off up here, yeah. obviously there's a little bit of meat there yeah. that we've removed. So when you're getting through that bone, it's like, see, you're almost, you're getting into the bone, right? So again, stop. Good to go. So then it starts, you're just basically taking it down bit by bit to make it more manageable. Yeah. When you look at the whole carcass, it's like, oh my God, like, it's, it's very daunting. But when, as you start breaking it down, it's actually really easy. Yeah. Good. So, inside of the carcass, the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna take out the fillet. Yeah. So it works, I mean, once you've done one animal, it's quite easy to do all of them. So it's, it's, it's kind of similar as a, as a goat, as a lamb, as a mutton, as a venison. They all have a very similar structure. So on every animal, the fillet will be inside the ribcage. Obviously on a cow, it'll be much bigger, but this is exactly the same cut. So it's where the fillet of beef would be. So we've got the kidney here to take out. Do we do anything with that? Yeah, well, that will go into our uh, terrain. Yeah. So our pork offal terrain. Yeah. And obviously, in the, in the hole inside here, you've got loads of bits of trim and stuff. Yeah. The beauty of um, getting a whole animal is you get so much of all this, all the, this, all the extras you get. Yeah. To when you're butchering it. Yeah. So all these bits of meat and trim, we can use for our sauces. We can use the fat to make the sausages. And it just, sorry. <laughs> and all of that is just usually product you pay for. Yeah. But you will get it obviously all for free when you do yeah. your own animal. 
So we're just gonna run the knife, nice skinny knife, down the inside of the frame. And then that way you're just pulling it and releasing. You can't go wrong, you just go to the bone and then you're just pulling it down. And that's the fillet. Oh look, the barman's here to have a little look. Yeah. Getting some inspiration, big cocktails. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you want some waffle? How about pig offal, old fashioned? Let's go. Dehydrator. Right. Take a shrub. General manager of one. Friday, um, yeah, Friday 10 30 works for me, bro. Cool. So, um, multitasking. He's on camera. We're on film. Marcus. Shall so, that, that's, your, that's, your, that's your fillet there. Yeah. So, obviously, that comes out. We'll just, I'll just show you how it, how the, how it works now while we've, got, while we've got the boards out. But with the fillet, you can kind of put, you can almost pull it away from the rest of the sinew. And does that come in the center? Is that all the. It's always in exactly the same place, okay. right here. Yeah. So that's your, effectively, yeah. rump. Yeah. Um, your loin. Yeah. Your rib. Yeah. So on a beef, this would be rib of beef. Yeah. Sirloin. Yeah. Rump of beef. Yeah. Same on, same on a lamb. You've got your, your lamb saddle. Yeah. You've got your rack of lamb. Yeah. You've got your rump of lamb. Yeah. It's the same. Slightly different names. Yeah. But it's always exactly the same. The fillet just sits on the inside of the loin. Yeah. So you know when you do a saddle of lamb and you have, or a barnsley chop, you know, you've got the meat, you've got the two little bits, the yeah. pencil fillets. Yeah. So obviously on a smaller animal, like you call this a pork fillet, you call it a beef fillet. On something like a lamb, it would be a pencil fillet because it's quite yeah. it's quite small, you know, tiny. On a venison, you know, you're looking at, you know, this is 50 kilo, a venison might be 28, 30 kilo. So you can imagine it's a lot smaller. Yeah. Um, so everything, all the other cuts just become smaller and smaller. Yeah. Um, so as you can see, you've got the sinew, you've got the trim on it. As you can see now, that, now we've started to peel it away, it's kind of more resembles what a fillet would look like. Yeah. So then you just, you just trim this off. And you kind of, you know, you get, you get that, you see, you don't see much with pork fillets because obviously it's so small, but you'd need so many pigs to be able to get enough to put it on the menu. But it's quite good for like, when we, when we use it, we just save it up for the lunch menu. Yeah. Just take off a bit of sinew. And then we usually just bulk it out, use it uh, like use it for a couple of dishes. The meat is super tender, doesn't necessarily have the like it's quite a lean cut. Like there's little bits of fat here which you can leave on as long as you get the sinew off, because the sinew will will contract when it cooks and it will yeah. curl up like a banana. So there's your fillet. Here's all your beef. Here's all your pork trim. So we'll just dice that up and mince it all down. And it'll either go into sauce or it can go, uh, we can use it, mince it and put it through the sausage. Yeah. So fill it, trim. Um, so then again, now you just, again, you've just revealed more of it here. So now you can see a bit more of what a pork leg would look like. Yeah. The first thing we're going to take off next is the shoulder. Yeah. So that's where your collar goes. So that's your, so the pork collar is basically an extension of the rib. So you know, you can see the start of it here. If you look at the end of that meat, you can see those muscles that resemble a, co uh, you know, a copper. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Charcuterie. Yeah. So copper is basically cured pork collar. Yeah. So the collar runs, um, runs down here. And then that collar then turns into the rib, which turns into the loin, which turns into the rump. One. Yeah. Um, so we're going to take this off approximately. Obviously, it doesn't. For what we're because we're we're going to just going to dice the shoulder up. Um, just watch it. Yeah, yeah, cool. So we're just going to most of our shoulder goes into the sausage. So it's not like we're going to bone it out and roll it like traditionally you might roll it up for a Sunday roast or something like that. So w where we take off the shoulder is not that important in terms of bone. So we won, you can count the bones, this is just a good reference point. Yeah. So one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go in at five bones deep. Yeah. Again, if you think it looks a little small, you could go six, you could go four. It's a bit of trial and error, especially when you're learning. But I would aim for five is a good shout. One, two, three, four, five. So it's about here. And again, obviously there's quite a few little bones to maneuver, but all we're gonna do is just gonna make an incision. We're gonna make an incision all the way through. And I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to know roughly where to cut. So I'll find that hole so it's there. So those bones 
So the bones are basically the, like the, the rib cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, like it could be like you can see that's where my incision was. Yeah. If I went there, if I went there, it's not the end of the world. You yeah. could just guess. Yeah. But while you're learning, just yeah. have a reference point for yourself. Yeah. Obviously, you're going to be doing six of these a week, so yeah. you're going to know roughly where you should go. Yeah. So then I'm just going to take my larger knife, just choose the right appropriate tool. To be honest, it actually looks quite a large shoulder, so I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go centimeter to the left. Screw the fat, again it's nice and fatty so the cut should be quite simple. All the way through. Once I'm good down to the bone, I'm just going to do the same method as I did with the head. Take the saw. This bit aside for a second. Let's open the other. The back half. Turn up. Just let Josh know his stock is ready. So we use this for sausages, but we also, when we need to, we use it for copper as well. Um, no. So, obviously, we'll just pop this bit aside for a second. Yeah. So again, now it's like you just break it. Once you break it down into lots of other bits, it's quite easy to manage. Yeah. So this, when we buy the other pig, this is how it comes to us. Yeah. It won't come like that. Yeah. With this just comes from this supplier hole. This one doesn't. So I'm just gonna get my knife off. Really important your knives are super sharp when you get Because if it's if your knife's actually blunt, it's when you can actually cut yourself. You know, you can imagine trying to cut into that, it's slipping off, that's when you're gonna make little nicks and stuff. Um, so we because of the amount of charcuterie we go for go yeah. through, um, we buy we buy in extra coppers to do shark, to do the Charcuterie, but this is what we use on the a la carte. So we use the collar on the a la carte, so we use the loins, and then we do copper as well on the, on the uh, sorry, the collar as well on the a la carte. Um, so what we'll do next, I'll show you, I'll remove the collar, show you how to do that, really easy. So, so depending on how they split the pig, you might have bone all the way across here. Yeah. But all you're gonna do is take your knife, your, your smaller knife, you're just gonna go follow the bones, Follow the knife as close as you can to the bone. To make sure you angle it up. If you have your knife angled down, you can go down into the meat. So and knife angled up, nice and gentle. And right until you get to the bone. And then once you get to the bone, this, this is just goes round like that. And then we're just gonna go round that bone. You've got the little, the few, the few ribs there that we need to take out. So if I go up into that bone, I'm just going to go down and then angle my knife up against those ribs and out the other side, okay? So down like that, against those bones, so now I'm pointing up and then out the other side, okay? Yeah. And then it's just, the ribs obviously stop there, so then this bit, there's actually no bone here. So you can just use, use, your, use your hands and stuff to feel where the bone is. Like I know there's no bone there, the bones are there, so I'm good to go. So then, just a matter of going around that little bone there and then just pulling if you're ever not sure you can just pull it away a little incisions like so and then around there and as i mentioned because we're going to primarily use this for sausages yeah if you do make a little mistake and you do leave too much meat on you can just go back and take it off right it's always going to happen unless you know we're not, we're not butchers, you know, we're chefs. We do many, many skills. So like, if you leave, it's good practice just to go back through the bones. Like if there is any bit of meat you've left on there, just take it off with your knife. Helps you to understand, you know, the, the bone structure of the animal. Like so, and then we can just all that for mincing down. Once you're happy you've got all the meat off the bone. You know, there's nothing wrong with this, it's actually being thorough. Yeah. You know? And then we're just gonna chop it up ready to go um, so obviously with all the but all the bones are going to go into our stock just going to chop them down smaller so we can extract more flavor from them cool sorry cool so bones we've got a trimming cool right so bones off that now 
that's the main bone on the top. Now the only other bone is obviously from the leg down into the shoulder blade. The collar has no more bone. Yeah. So the collar, to get the collar out from here is really easy. You're taking the rib bone off, you can see where that lies now. Yeah. So to get the collar off, all you, you can, it, the collar is a round muscle that sits there. So all we're going to do is just cut down like that and then just go round and then you'll, you'll, hit, you'll hit the shoulder blade. You hit the shoulder blade and then we're just going to go round. You can't miss it because you're, you're not just going to hit it. Yeah? That's the shoulder blade. So you're going to go down, we're going to hit the bone and then, as I mentioned, because we're going to use all this, where you go in is not the end of the world. But you don't want to keep, you don't want to make too many cuts because you want it to be nice and smooth. So you hit the shoulder blade, then you're just going to follow it around, a bit like you'd be filleting a fish, like so. Yep. And then you're going to reach, then you're going to reach, then you're going to hit the fat, and then you can just go straight down, like so. So kind of, kind of easy. Again, it's going to look a little bit messy here, and all we're going to do now is just tidy up that muscle. So we're going to, we're going to take this fat, this. Um, we're going to take this off because that's going to add a really nice bit of fat to our sausages. And there's so much fat already in the collar, we don't need that extra bit. And then we're just going to trim it up nicely because we're going to cut portion this into steaks. And then we'll sell that. So much fat like in the, in the yeah, like, you know, for example, on a yeah, sirloin, yeah. you want to leave all the fat on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is going to, this is actually going to add so much fat to our sausages. Yeah. And it's beautiful fat, you know, really, really premium pork fat. Um, and then you've got a nice collar muscle there. You can see the structure. Yeah. Now to firm this up slightly and make it into a bit more of a premium cut, we're gonna obviously, when we, when we do do this, we're gonna cut it into lovely steaks. Yeah. Approximately 180 to 200 grams. And then we're gonna brine those. And then once, once, once they're brined, then they'll be, then, then be, they'll almost be nearly as good as the loin, to be honest yeah. with you. They'll be super, super delicious. Yeah. And then that's that. So that's, so out of the shoulder, with a little bit of respect, and a bit of, bit of trial and error, we've, ne we've been able to make a prime cut out of that. Yeah. So that then just increases the value of the pig for us. Okay, so that, that's actually a lovely collar. Again, you could cure this, hang it, and then that would make copper. Yeah. Obviously, the copper that you'd see in supermarkets is massive, because it will come from huge pigs from like Germany and stuff. So that's the collar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, so shoulder here, all we're going to do with the rest of this is we'll just remove the bone and then dice up the rest of the meat ready for mincing to make sausage. Cool. We're not going to, not going to do that one today because we haven't got the time to do that. But then we're going to move on to the rest of the stuff. So that bit there, you can't really go wrong with the shoulder because it's just, you can't, you can't do it wrong because it's all going to be minced anyway. So it's just as make, just going through the bones like the other bit and just making sure that you get all the meat off there. Yeah. Simple as that. So now we've got the loin, the belly, the leg. So next step was going to be to remove the leg. So, you're part of the muscle there. <laughs> Slam dunk. Um, a radio. So, obviously there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Some people say do like something. Like, for example, if I was doing a venison, I would take it off, I would take it off here. Okay. And I would just take it off as one bit. Because um, we get, with the venison, we take all, all the meat off the bone straight away. Yeah. Just for, whereas the pork, we'll actually, we'll leave the loin uh, hanging in the fridge maturing until we actually need to portion it. Yeah. Whereas with the venison, we usually, we usually find it goes like a bit, a bit more, it goes a bit like, it doesn't age quite as well as the pork, it doesn't yeah. have the fat. Yeah. When you're aging anything, it's, it's always about uh, having the fat. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna go in um, to this bone here, which has already revealed itself, and then we're just gonna go round it, and then that will lead into a ball and socket joint, um, and then we'll just pop it out and then remove the leg. Yeah. Um, so about here. Again, it's just using the same principle. So just finding a way. Of yeah, like you can already see the, the ball and socket joint has sort of revealed itself straight away. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, as long as you're just using the tip, of, if you've got this massive knife, you're just going in, making sneak cut. Hold your knife nice and strong, nice near the bottom, and you're just using the tip, like those bottom two, three inches. 
and then just, just revealing the meat. Use your fingers to sort of like feel around the bone. And then there you can see the joint straight away. And then again, it's just about prizing it open. Again, most of this leg is going to be used, we're going to use the leg for the lunch menu. The more you do, you're just gonna get more and more. You're just gonna get more and more comfortable with them. Yeah. Obviously, as you go, feel free to like sort of remove little bits of meat as you're going, yeah. and we can just add that to our meat pile. Yeah. Big Gandhi's uh, helped by uh, getting spread. Pardon? Big Gandhi's helped by getting spread. It won't be long, it'll be about 10 minutes, Matt. So once you've taken the socket, pop, pop the leg out of the socket, and then that's it. We can then set that aside. Go just move that aside, move that away, sir. Animal. And then that will then, with, with that bone there, the bone just runs straight down the middle. It's like a leg, so it's just like any old, old leg. So you can we'll literally just butterfly it open, remove the leg, and then break the leg down into different muscles. Um, we've then got pretty much our belly attached to our loin. So we will just store off this little top bit of the leg, but keeping on the bottom part of the rump. So just like so, yeah. Uh, no, we're good, thanks, man. So get inside the bone. Once I'm through the bone, you can feel it, and then down. Move that. Set that aside. So this is the end of and that's just like the top bit of the leg. It's just the way we've taken it off. I mean, there's a million different ways you can do it. That the little bit of dry skin there will go, yeah. just tuck that into the stock of the bone, and then the last, all that other bit, all that other meat there, will just go into our mincing for sausages. It always helps to prep it as you go along. Like you could, because then it's, it's already diced, ready to go. You haven't got to go back and touch, go back and re-prep everything as you're going. So again, just really making sure you're getting everything you can off it. Off it. Just go meat, bone. And then the next bit we're gonna do, is basically just remove the belly off the loin. Yeah. Now, depending on what you wanna do with it at this stage, you could do like a tomahawk pork steak and take like do some chops like this with a huge long bone. I yeah. mean you could do like a wicked like sort of pork chop that's like six, seven inches long. Yeah. Well obviously we need all the belly for our Sunday roast. Yeah. So we actually want to take we want to leave enough bone on the chop that we have that nice shape yeah. like we do. But obviously if we leave too much, that chop's just gonna be wasted meat because we can actually sell that as our Sunday roast. Mm -hmm. So it's all about maximising the cuts depending on what you're using it for. Yeah. Like this won't work for every restaurant, but it's, it works for what we want to do with it. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get rid of this little dry bit of meat on the top, just to tidy it up a little bit. Obviously where it's been dry aged, it's a bit, it's a bit leathery and a bit papery. Most of the rest of it can stay on, but we'll utilise that and we'll, uh, we'll put that into our sauce. With the bones. So next, this bit, um, takes a little bit of effort with the sawing. So we're just gonna go, I'm gonna leave about an inch and a half to two inches above where the meat, where, about where the chop is. So as you can see, this is the, where, the rib, where the ribs are. The ribs end here, and then that's just meat. So we'll start, right, there's, there's the rump. So we're gonna start about here, and then I'm just gonna score, and then I want about an inch and a half, to two inches, I reckon about there. And then we're gonna saw through there. Yeah. Now, as you can see, this, you see how it curves into the shoulder? We probably, if I'm honest, when we sawed off the shoulder, we probably could have gone about two inches lower. Why would you have wanted to go more? 
Well, just because that bit is technically, you see where there's that little bone there? Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's it's technically a little bit of the shoulder. Like but, as I mentioned, you know, yeah. you can work around it. Yeah, yeah. So maybe... Yeah, all of that in those five or seven. Yeah, I think, I think when I saw it, you know, I went like an yeah, inch the other way. I probably yeah. should have just left it where I thought it yeah. was. But it's not the end of the world because you can still use it. Yeah. But I reckon probably more like there would have been a bit more, a bit more where we should have gone. So I'm going to start, I'm going to cut my knife through. Nice and be, make sure you make nice, confident cuts yeah. all the way through. And then it's going to, all the way through the meat. And then it's going to, that's where I'm going to aim to saw through. Then I'm going to take my saw. This bit will be a little bit tricky because obviously the size of the saw and the size of the pork. Cut. So it doesn't yeah. take much, it's only a little couple of little bone. Then it's just that final cut really hard with the very tip of the knife just to get through that you know, thick skin. And then we're good to go. So, last little bit. Then you can trim it up here just a little bit for appearance, or you can leave it as it is. But we're pretty, because we've tidied it up as we've gone along, pretty much ready to go there. So, what? Oh. You've got a lovely, lovely, lovely layering of fat. You've got the eye of the meat. And all we're going to do now is just, we're just going to hook it up, hang it in the fridge. And then when we need to portion it, we'll just bring it out, cut it into the chops, remove the skin and brine it. And we'll just prep it all in one go. Yeah. So we'll go through about five or six of these a week. Really, really simple. And then now they're prepped, they're just ready to go. So I'll pop this into the fridge just now. You just find you can find any way to, to hook it up. So the chop is the loin. Yeah. So as I mentioned, you got that's the, that, that's more of your chop where you've got the bone. Yeah. And then that becomes the loin. Yeah. And then you got the little bit of rump okay. on the end. Cool. Yeah. We can just hang that up until we need it. So let's pop that in the fridge. Just there. Thanks. We're going to brine this, and then we're going to we're going to slow cook it overnight. Once it's cooked, we then remove the bones afterwards. Yeah. The only thing we'll do is we might, if there's any meat which I know is not going to be usable. For example, you see how there's a lot of fat on here. Now there's no point in me waste. There's no point in me brining it and cooking it, and then um, then just portioning it off once it's cooked. Because when it's in its raw form, I can use it in the sausage. Yeah. Once it's cooked, it's then just waste. Waste, you know. So it's better for me to take it off now, like here for example, it's all mangled and I'm not going to get a nice like belly portion out of it. So I'm actually, I'm actually just going to take it off in quite a big quantity because it's going to add, as I mentioned, a, a really nice uh, quality to the sausage. So take that off, then I can just literally remove it like so. That's just pure meat there. Obviously, it's not good enough to use as a belly portion, but it'll be perfect for sausage. Now I'm just gonna even go, go back and skin this, um, skin the skin, for want of a better word. Yeah. And then that's, uh, again, just getting off every single little bit of fat off that skin. We're gonna save the skin as well, because this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna 
we're going to pressure cook the skin, save it all up, pressure cook it, dehydrate it, and then that'll be our puff pork skin. And what's the point of um, pressure cooking it first and then dehydrating it? Um, it just gets a very consistent product. Okay. Because you know you can process it all, you can it store it's, it's, uh, it lasts forever because it's dehydrated, you know. Um, and uh, it's just a very consistent product. So, like we can do like we do traditional crackling, but how it's very inconsistent. Yeah. It might be amazing one day, not good the other day. Yeah, yeah. So for us, in our scale of operation, yeah. it's much easier to do something that you can do recipe it up, batch yeah. cook it, and it's a consistent product. Yeah, yeah. So that obviously you can imagine from the whole pig, we'll get a lot of that. Yeah. So we just save it all up, box it up. Once we have the whole pig done, then we'll press cook it in one go. So you've got all that lovely fat ready to go, which we're again just going to go into our diced meat. Same with all of this. You're good, uh, Tom? Fantastic, yeah. Good. How was lunch, sir? Steady. That's pretty crazy. Cool. So there's all our diced pig, diced belly trim. Might just take a little bit. A little bit of this side bit off as well, because obviously, it's, as you can see, there's so much fat there. Yeah. Um, so we'll just... Uh, you can wait longer. And again, same process. Again, we can use that skin like the other one. Yep. And just a quick, so this, we'll just recap that quickly. So, <laughs> belly, yep. ready to brine. Leg, Leg, which we're going to de, which we're, when when uh, when Josh needs it, he's going to debone it. And then we'll break it down into muscles and then use that for the lunch menu. Yep. Shoulder. So we've taken out the premium collar. Then we're just going to debone that, dice it up for sausages. Yep. Done. Then we've got our lovely collar, premium meat. We then got our trotters. Ready for stock. We've got our head, which we're gonna brine, cook, and then we've got this lovely, lovely pork fillet. The loin is in the fridge, hanging up. And then from that, we've also got our skin trim, we've got our bones and trim, and we've got our diced trim, which we can use for sausages. So all in all, as you can see, that's how, it's fairly straightforward. Yeah. And obviously, there's, then, there's still a lot of labor done in having to debone this, but, the majority of the skill is just making sure that the premium cuts are really well accounted for, making sure this is really good, this is really good, and then with this stuff, it's just about getting all of the meat off the bones. If as long as you follow that process, there's not really a lot you can go wrong. So focus on the premium bits, and then with these two cuts, the less desirable, but still we're gonna utilize everything. It's just about making sure you take your time, follow the bones with a knife, and get every little scrap of meat you, you can off the bone because we're never going to put anything to waste. It's all going to be used. Um, and then once we have all the meat, then it's very easy to find a use for it. And does the leg have a lot more like whole muscles more than the shoulder that you can like... It's, um, it has, um, yeah, the shoulder is a bit more, is a lot, is a bit more fatty. Yeah. Whereas the leg, it's a bit like when you do, you know, for the venison tartare, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. you know, break it down into all the different yeah, muscles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There'll, be a, there'll be a couple of bigger ones and then quite a few smaller ones. So we'll use the bigger ones for the lunch menu, which we'll roast off. Then all the smaller ones is what we won't bother roasting, we'll just go into the sausage meat as well. Yeah. Cool?